Scotty, I see you nodding your head to a 35 year old player will definitely be fine with yeah. an extra six to eight weeks off of the season. I'm curious though, with Iguodala saying, hey, I don't want to lose any money over this, what your thoughts are on that? Because there's times in Iguodala's career, he has kind of stepped away. I think he took $4 million less yeah. when he ended up going to the Warriors, all of that stuff. But he said this time, he's like, if I take less money now, if I take a more substantial buyout so I can just go to another team now, he's like, I'm never seeing that money again. What do you make of a player saying that? Well, I, I think he's telling the true fact. I think he realized that he's at a stage of his career that he's probably not going to get this kind of money ever again. So he's not willing to walk away from it. And I think ultimately he was hoping that Memphis got what they wanted out of this trade and was going to buy him out. Uh, he definitely wants to still play with a team that's a contender. But I think right now for him, the best thing that could happen for him is that he just continued to rest his body and hopefully they work out a trade that's good for him, suitable for him down the road. And if the Lakers or Clippers, teams that are you know at the top of his list, mm -hmm. wanted to trade for him, then they keep his bird rights. So if Iguodala decides, I want to play another season, they've got his bird rights. They can pay him more without, um, you know, within the cap if he wanted to come back and play another season. Uh, for those teams and so you know that's certainly a factor but when you get to the end here you know it's a lot of these buyouts just end up being what that veteran minimum of two point uh, whatever the number for his four right. two point eight for him million you you give up that money and then you get a part that's of that back when you sign with a team and it doesn't end up being a, a great deal of money for a guy who's made um, a lot of money in his career certainly. Yeah. And, and I was with Andre this summer playing some golf after this trade and his deal was that he felt like Memphis got what they wanted out of this deal that he was going to get bought out and be able to go to play with a contender. So he ultimately wants to play for a team like the Lakers, like the Clippers. He still believed that he got playoff type of basketball left in his body. He's not really thinking about going with a, a team that is trying to compete for a playoff spot because he don't feel like his body can carry through those 82 games of hard work. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And look, he's still one of the better perimeter defenders in the game. If yes. you look at the Warriors march through the playoffs, he had the highest percentage time defending guys like James Harden. Everyone they met in all of these rounds, he was the one that they put on those guys. I know a lot of teams would like to pick him up when he becomes more available. Scotty, is there anything about the end of your career, how you managed those contracts, how you managed how much you played that you wish you had done differently? Well, I probably wish I would have played with more veteran teams, teams that where I could have pulled back on my minutes. And, and even playing in, in Portland, I, I, I carried a lot of minutes uh, mm -hmm. on that team. But after I left Portland, I think that, you know, going to Chicago, I went to another young team where it would have been a better fit for me had I went to a veteran team and been able to pull off the court a little bit and yeah. focus more on the postseason instead of regular season. You got a little poetic closure, though. So I, yeah, like, it was great. I like that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN+.